All right, today we are going to look at one of Figma's latest features, which is gradient variables that can be used inside of your styles. So we're going to start off by looking at uh, how to build out our gradient variables within our brand alias and maps collection before we look at actually applying those variables to specific styles and then creating those styles as well. And we'll talk about some of the nuance associated with it along the way. It's a great lesson today if you're looking to supercharge your design system. Uh, we also have lots more content coming on text variables and more, so be sure to subscribe for that. Let's get started. All right, so let's get started uh, with our gradient variables. So what I have here uh, already built is three collections. We have our brand, our alias, and our mapped collection. If you're not too sure what these are referring to, I'll leave a link in the description uh, for one of our guides that explains those a little bit more in depth. And what we're going to do is just really just build a very, very simple gradient. Again, we're only going to be using a couple colors. We're going to keep things as simple as possible here. So the first thing that I'm going to do in my brand collection, if you watch any of our other videos by now, you will know that a brand collection are really just your uh, color hex codes in their purest form. So in this case, let's uh, go with the blue. Um, let's say blue. Oops. And then our 100, and let's uh, make this a little bit of a blue. Again, we'll be using about four colors, so just hang tight with me while I uh, set these up. So that looks good. Uh, let's then go with a 200, uh, a little bit lighter, something like that. Again, it doesn't need to be too perfect. Okay, so we've got two blue colors, and then let's maybe go um, with some red colors as well. So let's go with uh, red uh, 100. There we go. And then let's go with a red 200 something like that again it doesn't really need to be uh, too perfect so let's say in this example our blue colors are our primary colors again gradients aside our blue colors are our primary colors and our red colors are our secondary colors so let's pull these in uh, to our mapped collection uh, where we're going to go with a primary 100 and let's uh, create the alias of that and let's tie that back to our blue 100 and then let's do the same uh, for a primary 200, except this one is going to be our blue 200. Next, let's go ahead and uh, do a secondary 100. And let's create the alias of that, tie that back to our red. And then let's do the same with the 200. We'll tie that back to our red 200. So really simple in order to create uh, the gradients that we want. So we have just those four colors all set up. Next, we're going to look at our mapped collection. We're going to start off um, with what not to do when building out your gradient variables before we pivot uh, to the approach that we're taking here at UI Collective and building out our gradient variables. So we'll look at that next. All right, so now that we have uh, some colors in our alias collection, let's look at bringing these into our mapped collection. Now, one approach that I have seen a lot of designers take over the past month, which personally, I don't always think is the best approach, but hey, each designer has their own preference. There is really no right answer here is what I see a lot of designers doing is within their surface uh, grouping, they say surface gradients 100. So what they're doing is actually including their gradient variables or the, the variables that are going to be used within their gradients inside of that surface collection. So then they tie it back to uh, the alias primary 100. Then you might have a gradient 200. And then you might have, you know, let's say a gradient 300 which would be that secondary 100 again, just in this case. Now, the issue with this approach is your surface grouping can already be pretty complex. You know, especially once you get into, oops, let me delete this, uh, more complex variables. So you might have, you know, a surface action, uh, a surface uh, action hover, you know, a surface action one, all of these different uh, surface variables that our designers can consume and are, that are already living within our surface grouping. So where you might already have, you know, 10 or 15 different surface colors, depending on the complexity of your design system or your use case, all of a sudden, once you add, let's say, depending on the com complexity of your gradients, you know, another 10 or 15 different color specific unique for your gradients inside of that surface grouping, all of a sudden you might have, and I have seen some cases, where you might have 30 colors within your surface grouping. That personally is way too complex for me. So what I actually like to do is create a new group, new group with the selection. Oops, let me bring this out where I have, where I call this our gradients, our gradients, our gradients, whatever works. Uh, so then we have our gradient 100, gradients 100. I'm just going to link that gradient. So our gradient uh, 200, our gradients 300, 
And what that does is it cleans up our surface grouping so we don't have all these different colors that are specific to our gradients within our surface group. This also allows us to uh, have some flexibility as well. Again, depending on the complexity of your gradients, you can also have a gradients, uh, you know, our blue grouping. Uh, and you can also have uh, a red grouping uh, as well. And again, that is the approach that we are taking. Now, when it comes to consumption, uh, let me add a quick uh, square here, is again, you want your designers to be pulling from, you know, groups like your surface, your text, you know, your icon, your borders. You don't really want them pulling from uh, the uh, gradient grouping because those gradients should already be built out in your styles, which we're going to look at in the next part of this video. So what you can actually do once, you, once your design system is ready for publishing is simply just color scope. So you select all of your gradient variables, edit those variables, uh, turn this off so they're not shown in any supporting properties. So when it, your design system or your variables uh, are ready for consumption and your designer goes to apply uh, variables in your mapped collection, they no longer see those individual uh, gradient variables, but they will still see the gradient styles, which we're going to look at next. All right, so now let's look at uh, using your gradient variables and translating these into your gradient styles uh, and some of the nuances associated with doing so because it is a little bit more complex than you might think. So what I'm going to do here uh, is simply select uh, our square that we have and let's look to uh, apply a gradient. So the number what I see here is I see I have two stops and you can add infinite number uh, of stops uh, associated uh, with your gradients, but we're just going to keep it simple and only focus on two for now. So I'm going to select one of these colors, go into your libraries and look for the gradient variables in your mapped collection. But one thing you're seeing right here is that we had color scoped uh, our variables before. So let me go back into our gradient variables and really only turn... Uh, uh, or color scope your gradient your gradient variables when your design system is ready for consumption because that will allow you to actually build out uh, your gradient styles. So let's turn these back on for now. We'll turn those off a little bit later on. So let's open back up uh, our gradient here and let's select um, the first stop. So I'm going to go into libraries and in our mapped collection, I'm going to select, let's say, uh, our gradient 100. Then let's do the same for our second stop, which is going to be our gradient 200. And that uh, gradient is a little bit hard to see the differentiation here. So let's go back into our brand collection, maybe make this a little bit darker. I don't know, something like that uh, is just fine. So now that I can see that the uh, gradient variable is a little bit easier to see, what I'm going to do now is save this as a style, not a variable. Variables are specific to only one hex code, not multiple, whereas your styles can support multiple uh, different colors. So what I'm going to do is create a new style that I'm going to call gradient uh, primary. And again, when it comes to the naming conventions of your variables, I have seen a ton of different um, different naming conventions, you know, whether it's your gradient primary, or even if you want to call the gradients for their specific use case, like your gradients, maybe you have, you know, a hero banner that has a specific gradient that's used across all of your different pages. So you can call it gradient heading or gradient hero, um, specific to the individual use case for which that gradient is being used. Uh, but let's say we want these gradients to be a little bit more general. What I'm going to do is simply call this uh, gradient primary. I can enter in a little bit of a description as to what that's for, and then I can simply create that style. So then I can see that within our gradient full, our color styles, uh, I have this gradient with uh, that primary grade, which we just created. So then if I'm a designer and I want to go ahead and simply uh, use that gradient, I can go into our styles and apply that primary gradient. So now that I have that gradient built, and let's say maybe all I want to have is just simply one gradient, now I can color scope these again. So edit those variables, turn these off. So when I go to apply uh, our mapped collection colors, I no longer see those individual gradient variables, but I do see the gradient style, which consists of those variables for me to choose from. So now if I go back to uh, our local variables and let's say uh, I adjust uh, this, I can see that our gradient style adjusts with it. 
And there is an overview as to how to use your gradient variables within your gradient styles. Thanks for watching today's video, everyone. Just want to encourage everyone to sign up and join our community at uicollective.co. It's totally free to join uh, for all questions relating to design systems, Figma variables, uh, and more. We also have a ton of great free resources uh, on our website, so be sure to check those out. I hope to see you online, UI Collective.